Thanks for checking out this movie review video. So this is for the 2020 film His House, which you'll be shocked it's not on Shutter because I'm usually doing something either physical media review or on Shutter. But every now and then I will reach to Netflix, which is where His House is, and watch a little bit of what's on there because I've heard good things about something that's on there. Uh, so typically I'm going for something like His House that I had heard a lot about. And actually this is one of the rare cases where the film actually lived up to the hype when I saw it, so I am definitely recommending this. Uh, also, this is going to be a no-spoiler review, but other times I've gone to Netflix are for things like The Platform, which is another great film that you should see if you haven't seen, or any of the A24 horror films. So they do have some good horror on Netflix, it's just not as much. It's pretty limited, in my opinion, but I'm highly recommending His House. Now, one thing I want to lead with on this film is that I legitimately think that if this film had a lot less actual horror to it, actual stuff that's creepy and scary, and the atmosphere was toned back more, but it's the same film, it would have been nominated for an Oscar. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. Because it is a phenomenal film. It is a the type of film that is looked for when it comes to Oscar nominations. But with too, too much horror... That's what they do. I, I mean, if you think about it, the films that I only I remember getting Oscars in the past uh, that are horror or considered partially horror are just um, Shape of Water and Get Out. This film, quality-wise and story-wise and all that, is up with those films. The difference is the amount of scares and creepy stuff. So, I think they got snubbed. I think this definitely was Oscar-worthy. That's ridiculous. Anyway, this is written and directed by Remy Weeks, who, by the way, I will be looking for everything Remy Weeks does from now on. He's up there for me with people like Ari Aster and Jordan Peele at this point. I will, anything I see, new film by Remy Weeks, I'm on it. I'm going to watch it. His visual style is great. The visual ideas are great. His script writing is so tight which is a really, really hard thing to do. I can't tell you how many films I've seen that are good films, but the script has a lot of fat on it that could have been, you know, chopped out. Not in this film. Pacing is great. Script writing is tight. It's a, it's great. Uh, I mean, really good job. Um, so, Frights Bites, Fright Bites TV episode is basically the only other thing that Remy's done other than some shorts. So this is the first feature film for Remy Weeks, and man, what a uh, what an announcement to make for yourself showing up on the film scene. Uh, Weeks apparently wanted to feature the realities, or at least some of the realities, of immigrants to the United Kingdom versus kind of what people going to the United Kingdom when they're immigrating here, their you know life will be like. And I think they captured that very very well in this film, really. Um, not in a happy way, uh, as most people would probably assume, especially because it's a horror film, but in a pretty realistic way, and I think it makes a lot of very important points, which I know I said this is a no-spoiler review, but from the standpoint of some of like the subtext and themes in the film, I will be talking about that, um, but I'm not going to really talk about the actual events of the film other than just telling you it's about a movie. It, it's a movie about a man and a woman fleeing... Sudan, the conflict in Sudan and Africa, and going to the United Kingdom as immigrants, and they're given a house to live in, and things start happening in the house. That's all I'm going to tell you. I will not go any further that with that, with the events, just watch it. So it's, it's important to note that Matt Smith is in this film because everyone's always looking for, oh, I recognize that face, or I know that actor or actress. So Matt Smith is in this. He's best known, obviously, for his role as Doctor Who for a while, as actual Doctor Who. Uh, but he's also been in some other stuff such as The Crown, Pride and Prejudice, and Zombies. And he's going to be in the upcoming Marvel horror-ish film, Morbius, which I don't have high hopes for. I think it looks bad, but whatever. We'll see. But good for him. Uh, I'll talk more about the actor, the main actor and actress from this film in a little bit, but going to go through my notes as I have them down here. Immediately, the film looks great, and that's one of the big things. Directorially, great. Cinematography-wise, great. Uh, camera work is very smooth, very fluid. It has some really interesting, inspired shots in this film that keep you engaged. Acting is great. 
I mean, the music, that's another thing. I'll get to the music. I'll get there. Um, I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, a real flair, sorry. I'm like tripping over myself. I like this movie so much. It has a real flair for creativity, not just with the camera shots, the cinematography, the directing, all that. The story in general, there's a lot of creativity to it, not just the overall story and the narrative of it, but how they choose to bring up the subtext in it, how they choose to do certain small scenes that tie into like dreams, nightmares, you know, things like that. And then also the other events that are going on in the film how they went and pulled those things off. Because this is a film where legitimately there's scary stuff in it. I don't say that often. Uh, usually I'll just use the word creepy if you've ever noticed in my reviews. When I say creepy, I mean like could be considered scary to some people, but I don't consider it scary. I rarely use the term actually scary because not a whole lot is scary to me. But there's scary stuff in this film. And there were jump scares in this film that got me. I don't really get get got, for lack of, an, of, of a more proper term, by jump scares. Like, they just don't get me, typically. But there were a few jump scares that really got me. And I think that partially also speaks to not only the way they chose to, uh, to present such things as the jump scares and the actual scary stuff in this and design it, but also because of the integration of the music, the atmosphere that's kind of built and uh, upheld throughout the film, the tension building, which is uh, is bolstered a lot of times by actually taking the music away and leaving things very silent, which I'm a huge fan of. If you've watched enough of my reviews, you'll know that. I bring it up all the time. So it's just a lot of really great stuff. A lot of great technical stuff and creative stuff just all converging to make this a really good film they waste no time putting a damper on things with what kind of could have been an uplifting situation i'm sure once again you know people would probably assume that because it's a horror film like there's got to be plenty of horror now that said i'm not going to tell you whether or not it ends on a high or low note um story-wise you know as as in good or bad but there you go they nailed me with a jump scare yeah i already talked about that some great uses of silence, which I was talking about, um, which ratchet up the tension. And I think a lot of the times they kind of use the silence to lead up to something where it's either one of the actual scares or a jump scare. And it just really works. It really works. There's actually some solid little bits of comedy working worked into the script, which it's tricky. It's very tricky when you try and do that with a film like this. Because for the most part, this film isn't funny, you know, and it shouldn't be based off the topic. Uh, but they find a way, Weeks found, Remy Weeks found a way to kind of place these little bits of comedic levity in the film that don't feel out of place. And they don't disrupt the flow of the overall film, which is hard to do, very, very hard to do. Um, whenever I do reviews for like horror comedies or films with comedy injected into it, I always say that, you know, it's really, really hard to get that balance right. And a lot of times if you don't do it exactly the right way, it'll feel like a speed bump that you're hitting while you're watching the film. But that doesn't happen with this. And actually, those little bits of comedic moment are granting audience members a little bit of reprieve from how kind of dark the film is and how scary things can end up getting. So it's actually kind of welcomed when that happens, not just because, you know, the stuff's actually kind of funny, but because as an audience member, it gives you like a second to kind of step back and breathe a little bit without taking you out of the actual film. So I, I like that quite a bit. Now, I said I was going to talk about the actual score. It is excellent. The music in this is wonderful. It matches up perfectly. Uh, Roque Banos... Uh, is the person who did it. He's done music for other films such as Don't Breathe, Evil Dead Remake, uh, The Lost Circus, and The Machinist. That's just some that people may recognize, but he's done a lot. This man has a long career and does excellent work. They do a lot of things to demonstrate a feeling of alienation for the main characters, and it feels like they really build upon it. So like each thing that's showing alienation builds upon is built upon built upon with the next thing that shows alienation. And that's part of the kind of atmosphere building 
that's mirrored not just in the overall like sit life situation, but the location. So those things kind of end up mirroring each other. So like things build up in both places, if you get what I mean. I hope you do. The acting of Sope Derisu and Wunmi Mosaku, uh, hopefully I said that close to correctly, my apologies, their acting is wonderful. And I'm not just saying this from a standpoint of line delivery, because, I mean, their line delivery is great, but physical acting, and one of the biggest things I'm into is really good facial acting. And their facial expressions and the way they react within scenes is phenomenal. Like, you... There are many times where they're not saying anything, but you can see what's going on in their heads. And you can see how they're legitimately reacting to situations and things that are said to them that is, it's awesome. It just comes across. And a lot of the times you don't really notice those types of things in film, but they're so good at it in this film that you actually take note, which says a lot. So their acting is outstanding. Um, wonderful, wonderful job. Sope Dirisu and Wunmi Masaku. Once again, hopefully I didn't mess it up too bad. Uh, the atmosphere created is pretty scary and dark. Like I said, it's maintained. It's really, really well done. There's a reveal in the last third of the film that is a pretty big reveal and actually does change a lot actually about the film. So I was very happy to see that this ends up happening because... That's just a nice little treat. You know, I was going to like the film even if it didn't happen, but I always find it to be a nice little treat when there's some sort of twist, whether it's big or small within the film, that kind of changes the way you think about some aspect of the film. And this actually does that. And it ends up being this kind of, you know, high gravity moment, which I love, love, love those types of films. And it can get you kind of, you know, even more emotionally involved in the film. You know, this film from the get, get go does get you emotionally involved. So that just also speaks to how immersive it, it is and how well done it is. It plays well as a horror film, but it ends up being so much more than that. It is so much more than a horror film, but it is a very good horror film. So yeah. Really tight script and nice pacing, which is hard to do. I know I already talked about this, but that is important to nail home. It is very hard to write a tight, good script, and Remy Weeks did it. So bravo. You really see the tough situation and horrible emotional impact of those seeking asylum and the cold indifference of those working in the asylum processing institution. I mean, on full display, and I'm sure it's not just something that happens in the UK, there's a situation where, you know, people who are seeking asylum are going through a process. And when countries have these set up as processes, there are people who work within that process who become numb to what's really going on. And I think part of that ends up being kind of a self-preservation thing because you can't really take on the problems of every single person you're working with in that situation because you'll become extremely depressed, you'll lose your mind, you know, things like that. You can't take on everyone's burdens all the time. Um, but it does lead to an issue where you start to give out indifference. And I think that's really well shown. And it's sh it's not shown in a way where it's like, these are bad people. It's just kind of shown in a way that like, they're decent people, but this is how they come off. And this is kind of the nature of the pro of the institution's beast. In, in a sense. There's a point that you can leave a traumatic situation, but the trauma is actually not going to leave you. I think that's something that makes sense to people, but you don't really think about it until someone says it, pretty much, or shows it to you, like in this film. Uh, and it's done quite well. Uh, there's also a focus on the struggle to figure out how your life should move forward because of kind of the push and pull of where you used to live versus where you live now. Now, getting a little more specific on that, um, it ult ultimately leads to a question about identity and how much you remain yourself versus being assimilated into whatever your new environment ends up being. How much do you want to be the person you were when you were somewhere else versus where you are currently? And how much do you want to give up to become like the people around you now? And that's kind of one of the questions. And it's something that, you know, it doesn't just get addressed in this film. It gets addressed in a lot of films. But I think the way that it's addressed in this film is very unique and very well done. So, once again, I like it. 
And once again, it bears repeating, if this film didn't have as much scary and creepy stuff in it and it, and it wasn't so dark, it would have gotten an Oscar. Well, it at least would have had a nomination. It at least would have had actually multiple nominations in my opinion. But anyway, that said, this is not a, a film that is perfection, but it's not that far from it in my opinion. And like I said, I'll be looking for anything Remy Weeks does. So out of five stars, I'm giving it four and a half stars. That is huge if you know me. I've only given like maybe three five-star ratings in the well over 100 reviews I've done. Actually, probably over 200. I don't even know how many. Probably over 200 at this point. But um, And four and a halfs, I barely give out two. So, big deal. Four and a half stars. This is a great film. If you have not seen it, you must see it. And if you have seen it, let's talk in the comments. I'm, I'm good to do spoilers in the comments. We can go ahead and do spoilers in the comments. Everyone just know that. Um, and we can go ahead and talk about it. So um, the other thing is, if you can, and you can, hit that subscribe button for me. That is your way to thank me if you like this video or any video I've ever done. That is how you keep me motivated to keep doing these reviews, whether it's a review that's like this, no like no spoilers, or whether it's chock full of spoilers and analysis or unboxing videos, haul videos, all that stuff. But please hit that subscribe button. I really do appreciate it. Also hit the notification bell button then because then you'll know when I'm putting up any new video, whether it's you know one of these or an unboxing or whatever. But regardless, I really do thank you for taking your time to watch this. And until next time, keep it brutal.